A very warm good morning to all of you. Dear students, once again I would like to welcome all of you to a new session of the civics class. Today we are going to begin with a new chapter from civics, chapter number 3, Prime Minister and Council of Ministers, part 1. From the title itself it will be very clear to you what we are going to discuss in this chapter. According to our democratic system of government, we have a prime minister and to support the prime minister, we have a council of ministers. And throughout this chapter, we are going to discuss about their powers, their function, how they are getting appointed and what is the tenor, what's the term of their administration and different powers like executive powers, legislative powers, administrative powers. So we are going to discuss mainly these different points related to the Prime Minister and Council of Ministers. But today in this class we are going to discuss about three different points. First one, the basic information about the Prime Minister. Second one, appointment of the Prime Minister, how the Prime Minister is being appointed. And third one, the specialities of Council of Ministers. What are their responsibilities? The basic information about the Council of Ministers. These are the three different points we are going to discuss in today's class. So without wasting time, let's move to the class. The Prime Minister. The Constitution provides a Council of Ministers. So according to our democratic system, according to our parliamentary form of government, we have a Council of Ministers. A number of people together will be formed the Council of Ministers. Prime Minister at the head. And there is a leader for the Council of Ministers. He is being known as the Prime Minister. And he is the head of the Council of Ministers. And his main responsibility is to aid and advise the President. As we all know, President is the head of our nation. We have already seen the different specialities of the president. We have seen it in the first chapter of the civics. So the main responsibility of the prime minister is to aid and advise the president and the president will be acting according to the guidelines and advice of the prime minister. According to the parliamentary form of government, he is a nominal head. He means president is a nominal head. You might be knowing what is a parliamentary form of government. Like in every five years we have a general election and in the election we are electing our representatives. And our representatives, they are forming a government to run the nation. That's what the parliamentary form of government. People's rep representatives become the rulers of the country. So according to the parliamentary form of government, President is a nominal head. Do you know what's the reason behind it? President is not being elected by the people, but people's representative, they elect the president. We have already seen it in the uh, second chapter. Indirect election is being, or by indirect election, the president is being elected. So, in the parliamentary form of government, President is a nominal head. Prime Minister and Council of Ministers are powerful because they are the representatives of the people or they are directly being elected by the people. So Prime Minister and Council of Ministers, they have more power and the responsibility of the Prime Minister is to advise and aid the President. I hope that you have got some idea about the responsibilities and specialities of the Prime Minister. Okay, now let's move to the appointment. How the Prime Minister is being appointed? The Prime Minister is appointed by the President. I repeat, the Prime Minister is being appointed by the President. So President is the person who is appointing the Prime Minister. He cannot act arbitrarily, which means he cannot act his according to his wish and will. He cannot simply appoint a person as the Prime Minister. Certain criteria are there, certain, certain methods are there. 
president invites the leader of the majority party as i have already told you after every 5 years there will be a general election after the general election the president invites the leader of the majority party so first of all if a person want to become uh, the prime minister he must be the leader of the majority party after the election and the president is inviting him to form the government why because that leader will be having majority in the parliament especially in lok sabha lok sabha is being known as the people's house why because the representatives in lok sabha are being directly elected by the people so after the general election when the general election take place to the lok sabha the president invites the leader of the majority party to form the government their leader to be appointed as the prime minister so they the president simply cannot appoint some person as the prime minister but the leader of the majority party will be appointed as the prime minister now you will be having a doubt if there is no majority if there is no single majority what can be done so the president will be inviting the person who can prove majority with the support of small parties we will take an we will uh, see an example suppose after the general election five different parties are, were there in the parliament and none of the parties were having majority in lok sabha so the president can call the leaders of two different parties or three different parties or he can make an or give an open chance to all the leaders of the different parties who can prove majority in the lok sabha so we have already seen none of the parties were having major single majority so in these cases what 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 they can do what they will be doing they will take the support of the different small parties so two or three parties will together prove their majority in that case both the parties together will elect a person as the leader of their party and that person will be appointed as the prime minister i hope you have you got what i have explained now we are going to discuss about the council of ministers so first we have seen what are the specialities of the prime minister then second one we have seen how the prime minister is being appointed and third one is council of ministers ministers they are only the members of parliament so only the members of parliament can become the ministers of or the member of council of ministers suppose if a non member is being appointed as a minister or as a council of minister he must be elected or nominated you will be having some doubts about these two points i'll explain it once more a member of the parliament only can become a minister that's the first point minister means only the member of the parliament can become a minister suppose if a non member of the parliament is being appointed as a minister just example you are not a member of the parliament right now suppose you are being appointed as a minister then what do you have to do you must be elected or nominated we have already seen the president can nominate a few number of people to lok sabha as well as rajya sabha to lok sabha he can appoint two members to rajya sabha he can appoint 12 members so he must be elected or nominated within 6 months from the date of his appointment the same exam example we will take right now you are not a member of the parliament suppose the prime minister of our country is appointing you as a minister what is needed you must be elected or nominated within 6 months 
from the date of your appointment as a minister suppose you are getting appointed today as a minister from today you have got 6 months of time so within the 6 months of time you have to be elected or nominated otherwise what will happen if you fail to be elected or to be nominated you will have to resign he will have to re- resign means according to the example you will have to resign so if a non member is being appointed within 6 months from the date of his appointment he has to be elected or nominated and suppose if he is failing in that he will have to resign according to the 44th amendment act cabinet has got certain special powers suppose if the president wants to declare a national emergency the union cabinet must communicate it to him in writing which means it was for the first time in the history of indian constitution by 1979 we have used the word cabinet for the first time and in the 44th amendment act says that national emergency if the president wants to declare national emergency the union cabinet in other words prime minister and the council of ministers together must communicate to him in writing which means the permission to declare the national emergency by the president must be given by the press prime minister and the council of ministers in writing so only when the president get the written permission from the union cabinet then and there only he can declare national emergency now you will be having some doubts about what is union cabinet a new word you might have observed so i has i have already told you in 17 sorry 1979 it was for the first time we have used the word cabinet so union cabinet means the union ministers who is working under the prime minister so we can define union cabinet like the prime minister and other ministers of cabinet rank they are the ministers who are having some special powers so union cabinet has to give written permission to the president if he wants to declare a national emergency so dear students i hope you have got some idea about the three different points which we were discussing in today's class first of all about the prime minister second one the appointment of the prime minister third one council of ministers and in the next class we will be discussing some other points related to the council of ministers council of ministers house have got divided into three different category and about them we will be discussing in the next class so with this i would like to wind up today's class and we will see again in the next class still then i would like to sign off thank you